Hola community, welcome to another episode of Lender Today Live, episode 97. We're getting close to the 100th episode of updates of what happens in the Blender world, plus what's uh, what's what's going on in Blender, Q&A. So what is, what is the status of this tool or this other development? During the week, we talk about uh, Blender every day. We, during this quarantine, um, period we are talking to either developers or artists about how they use Blender. Yesterday we had a live stream showing how to make loops with Mitch. Uh, earlier in the week we talked about nodes. Today it's a Q&A plus some of the updates have been going on regarding modifi modifiers. There is a, I was going through the list and there is a bunch of modifiers, updates, uh, sculpting and uh, many other areas. So today I'm inviting two developers to talk about uh, what's new in Blender. And uh, this uh, a developer you know, him. it's uh, Dalai Felinto, you probably know him. So welcome Dalai, hello. <laughs> hey Pablo, welcome, welcome everyone. Nice to be here at another show. Nice to be here, you're, you're a local already. It's like a... Thanks for for joining again. But this one, actually, the next uh, guest is not uh, going. It's not here very often. But it's not the first time here on the show. Welcome, Bastian. Bastian. Hey guys. Hello. <laughs> I can hear, but there's people cheering like crazy here. All right, so I invited Bastian um, because it's a it's a good moment for. I heard great things about the uh, latest Undo improvements, which you are working on uh, together with many other areas. But the Undo is like the thing that you're working on at the moment, right? Yes, totally. Which yeah. I can imagine Number is... Number one. Huh? Number one project. Yes. Number one project. And uh, you're probably <laughs> like, I mean, it's, how long have you been working on this project? It's like... Well, I mean... I started, I started working on it for like over six months ago now, but it wasn't uh, full time all the time. Of course, there was. I was working on some other things too. Wow. But yeah, this has been already several months of work in that project. It's yes, you see, guys, kind of complicated. And do is not a walk in the park. Uh, and do yeah. it's a uh, it's like more involved. It's not just like oh, a control set. It's just go one step back. How what can be the whole deal? So you already pushed in the experimental section of Blender 283 Alpha. You pushed a uh, setting that people can test, right? Yes, totally. If you want to, to try the new undo code, you can just uh, enable that experimental option, and then you can uh, yeah, you can just try it, test it, and get Blender crashing. <laughs> hey, I mean Blender Hopefully crashes not. even without that setting, so it's uh, no, it doesn't really crash that much. I heard great things. I had a live stream with uh, Bone Studio. It's uh, Juan and uh, mm -hmm. Rodriguez. He um, been testing this for like a while he even shared some some uh, videos like comparison before and after and it went from like 40 seconds to like one second or so in uh, some cases so uh, yes, it it's is. very promising thank you for working on it i know it's probably not the most fun part of <laughs> the whole blender code to work mm. on it depends <laughs> it's not fun when you have to hunt a bug in the production file. <laughs> yeah, that probably is even more annoying. So next um, in the list is that we are live. This is a Blender Today live, of course, and we're going to answer questions towards the end of the show, the second half of the show. Remember to ask um, here on blender.community, on the community website, Blender Today, and uh, we are trying to answer the, all of them, or uh, most of them as much as possible. So, for today, I wanted to go through some of the uh, new things that are um, here on um, that that were uh, done during the week. I have my list here, which I usually uh, make. It's a Google Doc where I just keep the list of things. Uh, like modifiers was a big thing uh, during during this this um, this oops this week. I was surprised. I w I started adding like okay maybe there is a. Maybe there is a little uh, improvement in, um, I don't know, one modifier, two modifiers, but there is, in the in the remesh modifier, there is a whole new option that allows you to um, have voxel remeshing. So the same way, if you do remesh, so the same way you can do, it's even the default setting but at the moment. So the same way you can have uh, the blocks, uh, for example, if I delete it and add it, uh, 
monkey. The same way you can have blocks or smooth or sharp, like these are the old ones. Now you can also have voxel. So remember that the the this new setting that was added while sculpting that you can do Control R, I think, um, to remesh. Now you can also Control R. Control R. Control R. Now you can also oh. I crashed. Let me close Blender as before. There is a, a if you slide that value really low, your computer might crash. Um, I was quick enough to close Blender before it crashes because it's gonna fill in my my uh, my swap memory. I wonder what happens on on Windows when it runs out of memory. So yeah, new voxel mode in Remesh modifier. Then um, the surface modifier also got a, an improvement. I'm gonna talk about it in the um, in the recap of this week, but the surface modifier also got a uh, surface deform, got an option for controlling the vertex group and the strength of that vertex group. So you can uh, not only, well, the demo is not great with a cube, but um, before it was just like the one thing, you just, you just add it. Now you can control in each individual part of your um, mesh to where you want to. Um, Assign it. The yesterday we talked with uh, Bas with Bastian with <laughs> Mitch about the solidify modifier, which also got a few more options. The shell vertex group and the rim vertex group options are now um, uh, you can assign a vertex vertex group for each one of them, which before you couldn't do it. So you can uh, now have. Um, a part of your mesh that will have a rim. I'm gonna make a nice demo for this for the for the recap, but um, the, the fact that you can now specify which part of your mesh is gonna have a rim makes a whole lot of uh, difference. And a whole bunch of options. The warp modifier also has a few options. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, even interesting to talk about this without an actual demo of all these settings. Is it, is it fun for you guys <laughs> to see it? You probably know already all these features. Do you keep up yeah. with the Blender updates? I was thinking here, but you know that this the voxel changes the remesh modifier came because of the work by Martin Falk. Yes, the, Scorpion eighty one. Scorpion eighty one, the developer who was behind the remesher, the sorry, the fracture modifier as well. And he had his patch, and then it was addressing a lot of parts of Blender, but kind of one of the requirements was also also to use to be integrated a bit further with the remeshing, and then Pablo did it. Pablo Dubarro did it on the side. So it's quite common to have these uh, collaborations where contributors send a patch. Then on top of that, the core developers maybe help to pick it up something on the side or maybe help the final implementation. It's not yes. ideal. Ideally, you know, get a patch that has everything, but sometimes you end up asking too much <laughs> from the contributors. So we can have a collaboration. What I like it is that it it's kind of a Boolean kind of a thing where you can uh, like because you do it live, it's just remeshing live and it, using a voxel, you can basically have kind of booleans, but uh, in real time and uh, using uh, open. Uh, this is using open VDB, right? This is using open VDB, yes. Yes, so it's even super fast. So yeah, the Terminator 1000 you can do coming out of the mesh. So that's super interesting. Remember that you need to have the uh, edit option here, just just so you see it when you're when you're moving it. In the in the modifier uh, here, the edit. Otherwise, you don't see the effect. So I, I'm showing. I don't know if you guys are following in the live stream, but I'm following. I'm, I'm showing how a monkey can come out of the of the, yeah. Of course, I'm falling no right as it gets too hard to follow the conversation here. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, and there is also a, a whole other options uh, in the warp modifier. I already mentioned there is now a from and a to option that before wasn't there uh, to use bones as um, so you can select an armature and then you can select a bone that before it wasn't possible apparently um, also Bastien you added the vertex weight edit and invert curve follow options for them right was it yes yes basically uh, like a lot of the, the changes in modifiers have been uh, uh, talking about uh, were made by Cody Winchester, which is a contributor who contributed a lot of patches uh, in the past months. And so I just like kind of follow the the, the trend he set um, when I saw an option to do it in the weight modifier. I just did it, yeah. But 
most of the, those changes were from uh, Cody Winchester. So Cody. kudos to him. Thank you, Cody. I don't know if you're watching this, but it's a very welcome addition. So another addition <laughs> from this from a developer that I haven't seen in ages, and now he mm -hmm. just showed up with a uh, new setting. Joe, right? Yeah. Huh? Talking about Joe. Yes. So let's switch to Eevee. In Eevee, there is a new support for alpha hashing. So it's a kind of alpha that it's uh, it's fast-ish to to compute, right? It's not like um, um, the super the most the slowest one. But although you need to have soft shadows enabled to to look otherwise to look good, otherwise you have like these lines on top of it. But yeah, basically you can have transparent hair in Eevee using alpha hashing by Joe Eager. He's been uh, involved in Blender for many, many years, for even like during Sintel, we have him working here in Amsterdam um, with the team, but I uh, haven't heard from him in years. And now it's good to see him back, even working on real time stuff. Yeah, he has a patch also for s cylinder, or cylinder hair for EV. Head or cylinder yeah. support. Yeah, which is the naming, the, this, this is the original name for the patch. I think you need, you need to change the name. But is this something that uh, Cycles has already? Yeah. But this is just uh, like, yeah, hair uh, cylinder support. Ribbons is called. Yeah, there you go. So it needs to uh, find yeah, it's kind of nice the see. The... So hair ribbons for Eevee. I wonder how fast is that going to be because it's, <laughs> well, it's uh, I guess in some cases you need it though. Um, awesome. Ah, oh, yeah, exactly. Um, Brecht commented here that this is the same as thick curves in cycles, where there is an option to choose between thick and raven. The naming should be changed to match, and the render shape should also be expected to be the same. Yeah, that's one thing that is important, is that uh, it should match both. The um, cycles and EV should should look fairly, fairly similar. Yeah, at first I thought there was actually a new feature that would be EV only. You can actually, my comment is saying that. Yes. But say not. That's how little I know about cycles, but the, the principle is the same. If it's something that's going to be only EV, you should have a really good reason to, to have it. Otherwise, the big loss to lose uh, compatibility across the engines. Yeah, I'm looking at you, shader to RGB node. We want you in cycles. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Speaking of cycles. There is an uh, improvement, right, in, in performance. Uh, cycles AVX implementation of Berlin noise. And apparently here there are no numbers, but from what I can see in the in the commit or in the patch, um, there has been some improvements in the, making it faster to compute. Actually, we, we were talking with the Simon uh, on Monday about how slow noise could be in like could get in uh, cycles. Not anymore. How is it is slow noise can be in cycles. What do you mean? Like the noise, uh, I asked him, so oh, the what are the noise, slowest sorry, sorry. nodes in, in cycles? And he mentioned that um, this that noise can be, uh, can be can be slow. But actually with this patch, at least one of the few noises is uh, making use of some um, some instructions that make it fast, apparently. Yeah, no, no, I, I heard noise instead of the noise. No, and I think, well, noise. it's either slow or it has noise. It cannot have both. <laughs> No, no, it's noise node and noise. So another um, optimization, actually, this one from our our buddy Jorun Bakker. Uh, it's uh, enabling OpenCL two when available. So this it's a it's a setting that you can enable in a preference uh, settings for system cycles. So this is for AMD graphics cards, and apparently there is uh, a big big improvement in some of the shot, shots of the the tests done. It goes up to like barbershop interior in master is 673 seconds. It goes down up to 497 seconds, almost 200 seconds less. That's a lot. In some cases, it's not as big in the pavilion parts of Barcelona. It's only three seconds less. And some of them, I think there is one case where it's like maybe, yeah, a few seconds in the classroom. I wonder what the classroom has that makes it a bit uh, slower. No, actually, this one is fast. Um, there was one case where it was... Ah, in Pavilion Barcelona, it's actually three, three seconds slower. And uh, the rest is all faster. Oh, three seconds is not the end of the world. I'm curious to see it for the next iteration of the open data, what they get for the open cell. Yeah, 
very curious. So if you have a an, an AMD graphics card, for example, in this case, it would, the test was done with the AMD Vega 64. Um, try it. Also, I'm curious to see how the impact is going to be on Linux or Windows or other. Uh, in this case, the test was done on Linux. So if you want speech, I switch to Linux. <laughs> It should be everywhere. So um, another improvement in the interface side of things is that now Blender is always using international font. What does it mean, international font? International font means that it has all the characters of, uh, well, not all, but a large, a very large amount of the languages spoken on the planet. So you have all the Chinese characters, you have the Japanese one, you have the Indian ones, you have all the Thai character set, you have uh, a lot, a lot of non-Latin uh, characters set. So for people that have issues in the past with Cyrillic, for example, not showing up properly, this should solve it? Yes, by default. Like, before you had it although, but you had to enable the international internationalization option in the, the preferences. Yes. Otherwise, it was just using the default uh, only English car set. Only English. There is even an automatic, I didn't know, that picks up the language from your computer. Yes, we, we can like we can read the, the the environment variables directly to detect the preferred language. So if I download Blender on a Spanish uh, Windows, whatever, it will open in Spanish by default? Not yet. We don't enable the, the translation by default. Yes, please. Because a lot <laughs> Yes, a lot of people prefer to stick to English. Which yes. Is kind of yeah, maybe it could be a setting yeah, yeah. in the splash screen on the first startup or something. We Maybe we could add that to the splash screen. Um, but it makes sense to use, like, I don't know. The, the translations are not always the best. Like, in this case, there is Spanish, Spanish and Spanish from Spain. <laughs> <laughs> which is actually exactly the same language, I think. I uh, still have to remove one of them. It's just not used. Ah, in so the, the, the options, actually the text inside. Yes, as far as I know, the yes, they are exactly language, the same thing. But internally, Blender is the same. OK, yes. let's remove one, please. Let's remove the Spaniel from Spain, uh, because it's just going to make things harder to maintain and just Spanish for everybody. Yeah, at some point, you know, there were guys who wanted to have a Spanish from Spain and Spanish from South America. It's and then not so. No, but, or, well. You know, People didn't actually update both, and they just ended up updating both with the both, same content. Yeah. So we need to remove one of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have to do that at some point. Some apps or even have like Spanish from United States. It's like, what is that? Uh, I mean, the, the the locals are defined like you know in the standard uh, ISO. I don't remember the number, but there is a standard for that, and all the the variants are defined. So you, you can define them if you want. But yeah, that's the point. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> All right. I mean, I remember for Portuguese, for example, the, the guy who was tran translating Portuguese at some point was very adamant to having the Portuguese from Portugal and the Portuguese from Brazil because they were not the same and everything. So, Gede Lika, his name, no? Ivan mm -hmm. was Gede Lika, his nickname. Yes, yes. Ivan Lika, yes. Last name, no? <laughs> Good guy. Uh, <laughs> I've seen him in a while. Next. Hey, hey. Sorry. Man, Next uh, topic, I'm moving into the overlays. Uh, wireframe was completely uh, remade. Actually, this is a, no, this is a, new, a new change, uh, a, a new method that it's only enabled if the overlay smooth wire is enabled. It's a way to fight the C fighting, <laughs> uh, pun intended, of uh, wireframes, apparently. This is a new uh, change that was done by Clement. And Apparently, it's going to help with the C fighting. What is C fighting? Can developers uh, explain C fighting? Bastian, don't have the owners? <laughs> no, no, I can explain this because usually. Yeah, just go on. I didn't catch the, the thing. All right, so the Z fighting is the whenever you have two objects too close to each other. Yeah. And if you say Z, it's from the camera point of view. So X is the horizontal X. Y is the vertical one, and the Z then is the depth. depth. And I have two, two objects too close by. It's kind of hard sometimes to tell which one is in front of each other. And then due to precision errors, often you'd have, for instance, we're talking about the wireframes. We may have the solid object and then the wireframe drawn uh, behind it. 
Yeah. And then you get to see the wireframe. Or like when doing ray topology that you see the mesh sometimes uh, be behind or in front or the edges and that's that's the C fighting. And this should fix it. Um, there is some performance um, impact apparently. Um, it's fairly minor, but um, apparently there is some performance impact. So you're going to look better, but careful. If you see that your performance is going down, might be because of that. So, all right, let's move into the um, sculpting section. In sculpting, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna go fast. S surface smooth brush. There is a new brush that allows you to smooth a surface without we, we keeping the shape. So it it only removes a high frequency. It's uh, very nice because the, by default the surface. Uh, the smoothing in Blender is very aggressive, so it removes your shape, and this one should get rid of those, um, basically the noise, and in, in your in your brush. That is super neat. That's and so nice. Super nice. And the also what it's nice is that there is a new way to initialize um, face sets, so you don't have to always draw the face sets as it was before. Now there is an operator which you can basically just um, um, start like you can see it while you're in sculpt mode you're gonna see the face sets and uh, there is a init face sets should be like create face set init sounds very technical very developer uh, maybe like create face sets and then you can create them by loose parts so the parts that are not connected by materials normals uv seams edge creases bevel weight sharp edges and face maps even face maps are being used for something yay Shouldn't that be populate maybe? Does it populate? Populate is even worse. We don't use populate anywhere. Creating shall I know. Yeah. There's plenty of options. Create create we use create in other areas. Um uh, but init it sounds weird. It sounds very uh, developer. Um so basically yeah, you can you can define your new face sets by anything, by all kinds of settings. Then uh, one of those settings as well is that you can create it from the um, from edit mode selection. So you can select enter edit mode, do a selection, which maybe it's easier because sometimes it's much easier to select in edit mode than uh, than in object mode. And then you can create a face set from that, which is pretty neat. And face sets since this week is now uh, supports multi race or the other way around. Multi race now supports face sets so you can go back and forth between different levels and the face sets should be uh, preserved so you can um, subdivide your mesh add more detail or remove detail and the face sets should stay there super nice joint work what happened why are you laughing at it? what's so funny uh the Sibrin on chat i was telling you that I, I forget that my camera is like in the bottom of my laptop so i keep talking using my hands and then i would block the whole view I was telling I should stop doing that. And he said, no, no, just do it. People don't see many hands those days because of video chat. It's only face. <laughs> <laughs> no, and the hands, is, uh, it's nice, you know. Rappers do it all the time and nobody complains. Another uh, setting, another, another nice option from the sculpt uh, mode is that the post brush um, now can use face sets as the origin mode. So face sets keeps improving. Actually, we are in Beacon 2. We shouldn't see new features, but uh, this one's are allowed because these are improvements over the face sets um, feature that was added in 2.83. Am I right? Yeah, it's a, right. it's always a hard line to, to draw because one of the reasons we, we, we try to freeze the features is to help people that are documenting it. Yeah. But in some cases, some of the adjustments are such a, such a huge improvement to the thing that was just added that to just make exceptions. Yeah, and also, right. yeah, and also Beacon was uh, Beacon Two was last week, so or two weeks. Yeah, ago. I mean Beacon Two is not against adding features, again adding a new big feature, risky project, that kind of things. But little improvement are totally fine to be added. It's not like Beacon Three where you actually really stick to bug fixing. Yeah, Beacon Three. That is mm -hmm. when is Beacon Three? Wait, I can Shh. find out in developer.blender.org on the sidebar. There is a 2.83 which you click and you get the schedule so it's in uh, in 10 days 12 days yeah wow already and so then we, we have one month we, to prepare the we, release 
and then I need to do PR. How PR? How? Okay. Not even want to think about it. But at some point, I might have to stop with the live streams because I have to have fun making the videos and the content for the actual release. So that it's all for no almost no it's not all actually there is a last improvement in the voxel remeshing this is borderline new feature but it is a it's a new way to um to see the size of your grid when you're using the the remeshing uh, option you can use shift f and you're going to see the uh, a grid that shows how big your voxels are going to be it's uh, super nice. I love when uh, Pablo or any other developer adds these kind of features that are like either overlays or helpers or um, which are, I don't know, they, just, they, they look sexy. I don't know. <laughs> and this feature has been around for a long time. I mean, on the, on the other branch he had. Yeah. So in that sense, it's not a feature that came out of the blue in the Beacon 2. It's something that's been... Uh, like on review in terms of usability and the code for quite some time now, so it's I think it's okay. Yeah, it's uh it's fairly fairly accept. Nah, it's really nice. Popery section. So there is a bunch of a bunch of stuff. Uh, Mac OS now also is going to show you the aliases instead of just the um the directories or the sim links. Now also going to show the aliases. Then um, there is a new. This feature is awesome. A new way, well, the new only way to copy the active view layer. There was, I, hmm. I'm surprised that there's this option wasn't even there before for so long. To copy the active view layer? Yeah, I had an option to copy the view uh, active view layer. So it's like a double. Yes, you can, you can know basically before when you were copying a uh, view layer, like adding a new view layer, you were basically just enabling um, the wall uh, oh. collections. Uh. No, you can either create uh, an empty, which is a, a view layer with all the collections disabled in it, or you can create an actual copy of current settings in the current view layer. So that was a nice, uh, a nice addition, yes. Very nice addition, and by a developer Chris Klein. I haven't seen him uh, before. Is he a new developer? Or just... I, yeah, I don't know. I don't... What's his nickname? That much, but... Late as usual. <laughs> the nickname, <laughs> which is funny because uh, the feature feels kind of late for like adding such a basic thing. So it's uh, late as usual. So super nice. Uh, all right. So next um, in the list of things and new things is a feature that I didn't know it wasn't. It didn't exist. Is that now you can do um, um, Shift L to select. Uh, sorry, Control L to to select the linked um, parts of a armature like like you can do with a mesh you select a vertex and you control l to select linked now it also works in armatures how does it did it i don't know how 20 years passed by without this feature I'm sure. <laughs> i don't know why people i i've seen animators animating one bone at a time so i don't know why they would use that <laughs> this now for like for selection this is in edit mode so, or is it also years, in uh, in post mode? Yeah, it's not in post mode. It's only in edit mode. Um, so the other feature that was added. Well, it's actually a change in the uh, merge operator, which used to be Alt M. Now it's just M. So no Alt. It's just you, like M was free in edit mode, and there was you you uh, merge so often that it just made. It, made sense but also because there is a new option where you can split the um oh, i lost it split menu there is a new split menu which is alt m which is like the opposite of merging so it goes with the with this alt alt to using the to making the opposite version of whatever the other key does so you can do split and you can split the selection or you can split by faces or face uh, faces edges and vertices so everything Yep. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I was, I was trying to see if M wasn't used in 2.79, so I was trying here. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and that's it. Edit Mesh now also has support for splitting vertices, which is the option that I was just showing here. So you can now split a vertex. So what does it mean? It's, it means that you can, for example, it's like ripping almost, but it means that you can 
um, you can split from vertices. So Alt M and then you can split it. And it's gonna make this thing, which is splits in all directions. Oh, should but I'm be, using the remesh, so it's- I think about this influence mask options. I don't think we should use slash like this in the UI. <laughs> what? Influence what? The, in the modifier, you ah, see influence, influence mask, mask options. Yeah. The slash kind of- Slash is like, looks weird. We, and we don't use it everywhere, so. Anyway, I think with that, I can call it a uh, day with the new features. Let's <laughs> jump into the questions because we're gonna run out of time super early. So, okay, let me. Let me load this in a new tab, just in case the website is uh, loaded. Oh, it's fine, actually. It's going pretty fine. So, let, whoa. <laughs> I had it with 22 comments. Now I have it 50 comments. Okay, let's uh, go as fast as possible. So the first question says, I'm making a lot of add-ons for Blender using PyBind. It's quite great, but I wish we had more low-level access, like modifiers in Python. Being able to yeah. create new modifiers using only Python would be very useful. Is this being worked on by Hans, by any chance? Hans Goody? I don't think so. But we did have so. a, what was it called? We had a Python library to access the blend file from outside Blender. But yeah. it's as useful more for statistics and to analysis of the, of the file. It's really not very handy. We have it, it's, I forgot the name, but we have it somewhere. Oh, I thought because there is a modifiers, um, panels, modifier panels, uh, how is it called? UI, the branch. Um, uh, yep. This, this is just UI for modifiers. There's no, no, no modifier, you cannot define them in Python because it would be basically a catastrophic impact on performances. So uh, we might revisit that uh, decision at some point, maybe when the nodes uh, are in. But for the modif the current modifier stack, it's just not an, an option. Yeah, I see. Uh, next question. It's um, let's see. Since you talk about it recently, where can we find information about the possibility of using shared libraries? Because it means uh, Python libraries. Well, I I'm not sure I understand the the problem. It is possible to use shared libraries in Python. Just have to put them in the, the Blender installation if you want to use the Python, which is features with Blender. But that's, I'm not sure I understand the, the, the issue. Like, I mean, when you are using binaries anyway, it's always a bit tricky because you have to be sure that you are using the same compilation, the same compilation options, the same ABI and everything. But otherwise, it's just possible in Blender as in a regular Python. So for that, you need to actually put it in um, in your wh wherever you build Blender, right? So uh, it depends. I mean, you can build Blender using the the system uh, Python. Then you just can use any module basically which is in your system, in your Python system. Oh. Or you c if you are using the the Python which is featured with Blender, then yes, you have to put them uh, in, in the, the right um... in the right folder in the Python installation of Blender. So is that is in like Blender version two eighty three slash Python slash live live? Uh, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly. All right. I um I actually I did it once with uh, some uh, OSC. Uh, next question. Um. Or wait, was it? Yeah. Next question says hi, Pablo. Grace from Blang Bangladesh. I want to do cool motion graphics in Blender. I tried some too. So I came up with some questions and also suggestions on behalf of fellow Blenderers. If there was some default particle in Manta flow like foam or bubbles, that would be nice to create realistic waterfalls. Is there any suggestions to create realistic bubbles or foams? I Isn't use it part of Manta flow already? I think there is a, a bubbles, but I think he meant he talks about some pre-built uh, like a quick effects. Um, yes. But it is possible already. Actually, I think if like well, you probably know this already. I'm talking to our our because it's, it shows in the UI is one of the options in the metaphor. Yeah. Our development coordinator. It's like in ah, I'm I mean guys, but if you use liquids, you should see somewhere like there it says like foam, eh, there foam and bubbles. It's already available here if you use um, liquid Manta flow. But maybe, yeah, maybe it's like presets. We need presets, yay. Asset manager. <laughs> no, we're not gonna talk about today. 
<laughs> Bastian, don't worry. <laughs> I, I wanna next uh, question. I wanna make realistic explosions to add in my video footage. I found it quite hard to make it, as well as creating four clouds. The cloud look like clay sometimes. Okay, that's not even a question, but it's more like a suggestion. Again, with presets, we need presets. Um, let's see. Yesterday I was rendering a scene in Cycles, which was only GPU render, but my CPU usage was a hundred percent, and GPU was only fifteen or twenty. Uh, well, because not every part of Blender is optimized for GPU usage. Um, I mean, not every part of Blender or even the rendering process can actually run on the CPU, on the GPU. On the GPU. Some uh, some code can only run on the CPU. So yes, that's, that can be expected. Yeah. It also depends on the, the difference of performances between your GPU and your CPU. If you have a small CPU and a very beefy GPU, then you can very easily um, fill the... the the work for the CPU and have the GPU on ideal. Yeah. So next question by Mille. Um, some questions. One, not clear what we have to expect for the Intopo. I think we don't have to, anything to stack, expect from the Intopo, right? Nobody's working on it right now at the moment. Uh, we do have the idea of well, the, the, this whole task with uh, Pablo Barro about removing Coding codes. But it's not removing, it's not working on it. Yeah, no, no, not working on it, but maybe uh, change how it's presented to the user. Uh, so we see it only in the snake, uh, in the uh, snake uh, hook, the snake brush. brush, and in the other one it's also required. The ones where it's actually most useful. And we also talk about, because right now we, you cannot do remesh if then then topo is enabled. We you could, totally, you could totally do it, just because by if you do it, you need to go to remesh and then back and then triangulate back but there's no reason for for that to be stopped but that, so that, those things those small things might happen okay next question are plant new modifiers for modeling or they will be overcome by everything notes uh, yeah there's, mm. there's no no real plan for new modifiers currently i think we already have to get the the modeling nodes in first yeah and then you you can also do much more than you can do with the current stack anyway so but even then, no real... had, like there were also no plans to for new modifiers in the recent blender versions but somehow we managed with <laughs> some new modifiers made it in like the weld modifier it wasn't like in the roadmap for... yeah i mean there's if there is a nice patch and the code is acceptable and everything of course it can goes in but it's there's there's no plan on the on the general roadmap currently for exactly it. from the main developers to work on it but actually yes. yeah there is um, there are some people just make an, a great patch like in this case a weld modifier and then it just makes it in and um, totally. non-linear creasing for sub subdivision modifier when or how um, creasing and another part of that they have increasing the with all the changes that Seke has been uh, working on for the sub sub modifier, one of the things where he was considering is how to handle crease. And then it's one of the reasons we are still using open subdiv for a lot of the steps for our own subdivision is so we can use their crease implementation. Yeah. But what is nonlinear creasing, I have no idea. Uh, nonlinear, I guess, is not um, that linear. And then nonlinear, maybe, is like in some parts. Or like uh, quadratic, or I don't know. I'm just uh, okay. So the question goes: So what do we do, people in the chat? What do we do with questions in the, the, that actually contain like ten questions inside? Is it fair to skip it, or just let me know in the in the chat? I want to know because I I try to answer all of the questions, but it's unfair with comments with only one question. Next um, question. Um, in the same comment, vertex groups in subdivision modifier I needed to avoid adding a lot of extra unwanted geometry. Will they ever be implemented? Vertex groups in subdivision modifier, like adaptive. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's uh, adaptive subdivision. Mm, will edge groups added in the near future? This question is like the question of the Every few weeks, there is a question that gets repeated all the time. I don't know if it's the same people, but edge groups are all the rage recently. <laughs> there's no plans of there's no plans of as far as I know, but yeah, it could probably be useful, like face groups and vertex, which makes sense. But 
as far as I know, there's no plan for it. But why do you need? Why do you need that? Because otherwise, you're going to be abusing the crease and the. Uh, yeah, crease seems. Okay. Um, um, it makes it easier I to mean, select when you don't. Yeah, exactly. It's the same as selection. Why do you need edge selection then? You can always select by vertices. It's the same point. You you have a better precision and a better control for some tools if you have edge groups. Okay, just code it then, Basia. Yeah. If you like it so much. <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> okay, okay, let's move on because we are running out of time. Bevel um, modifier. The last question in this comment. Bevel modifier should manage more constraints at the same time. Otherwise, a bevel modifier in the stack can interfere with the results of a previous one. Uh, again, mm -hmm. uh, modifier notes. Yes, basically. <laughs> Next question. Um, okay, this also, dear developers, I use Blender since 2015 and the more I use it, the more I adore it. Blender is very simple and very limited in tools comparing some other Mastodon in 3D graphics. At the same time, Blender is very powerful. Thank you. Nevertheless, Blender is still lacks in some very basic tools and there is a list of eight tools where it's lacking. I don't know if this doesn't really count as a question, I'm sorry. I know you're a Blender Cloud subscriber and a Silver Development Fund supporter, so thank you for that. But like, okay, maybe we can quickly go <laughs> because of the support of the Development Fund, thank you. But cloth tearing, cloth tearing, um, fracti fracture modifier. What happens with the fracture modifier that never gets added? One day, one still, day. It's still waiting for the uh, for the node uh, node system basically because it would be much easier and much more clean to implement it with the node system than with the the command modifier stack. Okay, next one. Switch node for shader editor. Uh, switch. Actually, we talked about this one with the uh, Brecht, right, Dalai? Yes. Yes. And, okay. uh, yeah. Next. Oh. Next one. So let's check out the video from last. Friday or two Fridays ago? Not two Fridays, Fridays ago. Oh, two Fridays ago. Next uh, question. Multi-object, multi multi-constraint properties. Edit uh, and have a patch for that. There's a patch for that. There's a patch for that. Some, some tools are featured to transfer high-poly simulation on top of low-poly simulation. Cache. Cache it. Cache it. And mix them up. Next. Oh, I don't know. That's my answer. But uh, it's a workaround. It's not like a tool for it. Uh, next. Uh, qu next topic transform gizmo to three for 3d cursor oh yeah mm. there's an add-on actually uh, for that that someone made and it's even on github um but i don't remember the name bisect modifier is it a patch i just have heard i've heard i've heard about that before i don't know if Kemba was working on that or something seven cup holes modifiers fill holes modifier remashing kind of <laughs> Um, VV, VDV remesh modifier. Yes, it's then implemented. So, okay, next. Uh, next question. Hi, as an animator, I have one small favor to ask. Can whoever is working on the 3D transform manipulators add more improvements to them? Made a thread about what should be improved. But it seems that it's not a question. It's a feature <laughs> request and it's all the way in Blender Artists. And it's really hard to follow threads on this uh, system. This system, I mean, the, the whatever Blender artist is using. The same we're using DevTalk, the Disco Discuss, Discord. Dis Discord. Discuss. Now, Discord Curse. is the other proprietary thing that steals your data. It's the other one. Uh, dis discuss, I think. Um, so it's hard to, to follow this question. Um, this kind of question would point to another website and I have to read a thread and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, Lapis C says, hola Pablo, in terms of modifiers, is there any possibility of incorporating the basic mesh edit tools operators into modifiers, presumably when modifier nodes become a reality? For example, bisect to create procedural sliding rocks in terrain. I think when it comes when everything becomes a node, and then you can have then bisect as a node. Which bisect as a node is just is like a Boolean modifier with some extra thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I think when like it, these kind of questions are really hard to answer because uh, nodes, you know, nodes can be anything. Next uh, question is: Is it possible that with everything nodes, modeling can become completely non-destructive? Yes. Yes. Um, next question is a very long one. Let's see. 
Uh, last time, Friday, you said that we have to ask uh, Brecht about the meaning of light power in Blender. Brecht is not here today, but I worked on and inspected the source code of Blender. And yes, it was hard work, but hard work that paid off. Thank you, Xdroid. I found on the source code the IES utilities. And there is a very long <laughs> uh, description. So in order to con convert Lumen to Watt in Blender, it means we simply have to divide it by... I'm not sure. 21,046. 77.83. <laughs> um, this is a very good question for, for Brecht. I wonder, please, uh, maybe you can post, uh, paste it on uh, DevTalk. Maybe it's a uh, good topic to talk on DevTalk. Um, like, it, you did a lot of work, so this should be saved somewhere in the actual forum where we can discuss it. Uh, next question. Hey, Pablo. Th greetings from Greece. Will Blender... Hey, Calimera. Nah. Well, no, it's not morning. Okay. <laughs> Will Blender give some love to architecture? I think there can be added more tools in, and methods for architecture models like better measure measurement, plans for top view, and other architecture designs by scale. Could be a whole new section like sculpture. I know it's a program that specializes for others and not architecture tool but some uh, small ads could gain a big architecture group of people. Um, Dalai, you're an architecture. I mean, I'm an architect, yeah. An architecture as a person. <laughs> yeah, so we do have a developer who is, I mean, most of his time he's working on the on Trigy, we're talking about a Germano, and then a part of his time he's working on, we call precision modeling tools, just specifically snapping as, as, a, first, as a first thing, eventually, UCS, Universal Scene Co Coordination System. But it's a long thing. It's not a big priority for this year, unfortunately. I'd love if you could have more uh, architecture tools, but hanging there. Hanging buddy. there. However, <laughs> you should check out the actively developed precision drawing tools uh, add-on. So that is actually being, being uh, developed. Like I see changes on it every week on the precision PDT. It's a built-in blender, so check it out. Next, ew, what the kind of monkey I left there? Okay, next. Um, Augusto says, hi guys, I hope you are doing well in this crisis. Are you guys doing well, by the way? I didn't even ask you, what kind of human am I? Are you guys doing well? Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. We are surviving like everybody else. Not everybody, <laughs> unfortunately, but yes, we are. Yeah, I mean. Doing uh, our, what the best we can. I'm being locked out now. Locked down. Next, uh, Augusto asks, is it possible to add a render queue system? That's oh, uh, possible it is, but is a... Uh, Wasn't there an add-on for that? But it needs to be this, uh, it's definitely not built in, in the way Blender is right now. Because whenever you render something or bake something, there's a one process running, of course. But if you use a, a render farm or, Flam or Flamenco, Flamenco. Right. Some Blender Cloud. Yeah, then we end up having this system. So maybe it's better to be left outside of Blender. I don't know. Um, sounds like a lot of work to maintain. I don't know for Blender developers themselves. I'd rather have your time spent in other uh, features inside of Blender, like being able to put a variable on my name on the export output <laughs> folders. <laughs> OK, I got it out there. Sorry. Then <laughs> Design Freedom asks, hello, everybody, and thank you for your great work. Are there any plans to develop the nerves. <laughs> it's one of those questions that keeps me back, right? Yes, nerves is another topic that shows up uh, fairly often. Um, I don't think so. Why wouldn't we, like, nobody even proposed to remove it. No, it's like, it would be great to do it if we had uh, some developer to do it, but we just don't have anybody currently to work on it. So yeah. I mean, like, I if, if some, someone is volunteers, he's welcome to do it. But I wonder, it's very isolated in an area of Blender that nobody touches. That's a... uh, it's not that isolated to have some okay. interconnection with the rest of the code. Because we kind of yeah. remove you know, Blender internal and game engine, but nerves, nobody talks about the nerves. The texture editor is still there, though. All right, so mm. next uh, question. Yo, 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 what do you think of the below ideas? And there is like a whole bunch of ideas. <laughs> let's, let's pick three. Control the, subdivision, control the subdivision modifier with vertex weight instead of edge weight. So you could make pointy bits. Vertex weight instead of edge weights. 
Uh, Did you control the, ah, you control, you control the, the edges, but not, yeah, I should make the edge very small. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I don't know about that. Combine limit methods in the bevel modifier. For example, if you want to limit by angle, but only within a certain vertex group. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, I don't know about that uh, either. Are you guys any idea? Combine limit methods in the bevel modifiers. For example, if you want to limit by two things. But again, modifier notes. Are there uh, plans in place to change sculpting to use voxels? I understand this is necess necessity for efficiently sculpting in VR. I don't know, replacing. We need to ask. Well, not, replacing, not replacing, but I think Pablo has been thinking about having a system for that. I think on the on the live with uh, Yama, they brought they brought that up right on from with Yama. No. Yep. I so, think yeah. so. I think they brought that up. Yeah. Um. Next. Um, no, that's it. Let's do three per, like, maximum three, or and then even maximum two. Um, so when you write a comment, try to write the most important questions, the one you really want to answer in the top. Next uh, question, it says, Lately, I've been trying to find ways to bake maps such as cavity, AO, curvature, thickness, normal position, and ID to help with texturing. Currently, baking in Blender has quite a few options. However, most of them are useful for final bakes. Is it possible to bake the AO and normal position from the list, but the others um, are not possible to bake unless you use custom AOVs, right? Shade uh, circles at least. I don't think you can do. Well, that's I mean, baking. We have a uh, bake is it's working. Well, it's working parts now. Baking is working, but there's a, there's a whole patch by Lucas to Lucas Stockner to change a little bit how it's handled. A part of this to support to help to make it easy to support new features. Um, I still think the proposal is like going back and forth. Brack had a lot of things to say to that. So we don't expect to see any change in baking before we sort of this, this design issue. Yeah. And I'd love to see this by the time we implement displacement baking for cycles, which I think is going to happen this year, hopefully. I, hopefully, because that's another question that I get every week <laughs> and I don't have an answer to it. Um, Less so only, 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 yeah, only with hacks and workarounds, I think you can make some of those. Yeah. Um, next question. Hello, congrats to all the Blender team and special thanks to Pablo Navarro, which is also part of the Blender team and part of the Blender payroll as well, for put uh, steroids on sculpt mode. Recently, I have a problem with imported and scaled meshes because when I work, these individually don't normalize or fail when modify the remesh sculpt. I'm sorry for you, buddy, but <laughs> that's not my question. <laughs> not really. It's like a bug report, I think. Um, yeah, just report it. Just report the bug, please. Next question. Um, Thomas Paul says, hey, guys, you're doing great work every day. I just wanted to know how Ton was doing. I heard he was a little ill. I hope he's feeling better. Uh, he is. Um, I don't know if he posted it um, online, but he's uh, doing much, much uh, better than expected. So. Good news. Next um, question. Well, he's been posting on social media, right? Yeah, he's working. Uh, he, not everyone is working remotely, so it's yeah, so it's hard to tell. But he's been super active online. We chat every day in the in, like in the studio chat and stuff. So it's just like like it's super normal. Next uh, question. Okay, we are almost up at the time. Let's do. Okay, let us ask. Five more questions. Do you guys, do you guys have to work? Have to finish working? I, I, I finished what I was doing in the firm, in the beginning of the live stream. Fine. Let do, do five more questions. Yeah, Bastian, are you okay too? Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. I can. I, I have time. All right, let's do fifty more questions. And okay, <laughs> next. <laughs> um, modify. Sorry, I don't know if you could go to the questions that have images because people put some extra effort on them. Okay, so let's do five questions and then we go to all of the ones that have images that are added at the moment. I, I'm not going to refresh the page. So, okay, modifier questions. For when we can expect to see procedural node textures to work with the displace modifier? Procedural node textures. They like, work already. No, you cannot use them for modifiers because uh, some uh, complicated uh, reason. I don't remember why, but it's not possible currently. And I don't think it's planned like we 
kind of rather plan to redo completely basically the, the procedural lectures system. Really? Probably still using Node, but with a completely different system. And then we might, uh, we like it should be part of the design to make them usable with the defiers or the brushes or whatever. I else know the textures. Yes, textures. Sorry. I, yeah, texture nodes. Textures, yeah, textures. Ah, okay. Like currently, texture nodes are almost useless in current render. Yeah. We, we, we are almost removed it when we got rid of the Blender internal renderer. Yeah. But we still use them for brushes, I think. For some and... stuff, I don't know. I used it the other day, well, the other day in January, and they were they were they were fine. They were there. I mean, they kind of worked, but yeah, they don't work for this kind of. Uh, project. I have a lot of limitation currently. Yeah. Question number four: Could there be a chance of getting Nvidia physics, live physics, and EV? Could be so awesome. Nvidia is sponsor of Blender, right? Maybe they will be interested and pay for it if you ask them politely. Um, I don't, I don't know what NVIDIA is doing, but they are actually contributing to Blender also with code. They added RTX support for in 2.83. Um, they even made a nice video on PR the other day they were publishing and we retweeted with the Blender account. And um, we're also talking about how to make that. Oh, now hiding in <laughs> nice Blender.org as I, I changed the the description and we are hiding yes we are hiding backend developer by the way if you are a backend developer but in uh, recently here we can see that the uh, nvidia design has tweeted and they even made a video which looks awesome which i couldn't find anymore but there is a video that shows the denoising in one it's super well done super well done i should do it this well next um question Number three, yes. Hello, everyone. Some of these points below were once in Blender or promised to be added, but they're, hey, what is promise? But there's no task or mention of them anywhere. Real grouping, uh, no, matcap per object or collection. Yes, material overrides or collection overrides. Matcap. Yeah. Dynamic overrides. Dynamic overrides. That's how, it's how we use the call then. Yeah. What happened to this promise? <laughs> It's still there. I mean, you just we just don't have time to work on it currently. Nobody to work on it currently. Oh, but uh, exactly. Uh, if I was work on it, and I, I don't. Uh, were we waiting for the static overrides to? I don't remember not, it was on the pens, yeah. Not really. It's not really related with static over well library overrides. So it's kind of similar project, but it doesn't work the same way. You have to like the, the dynamic overrides want to. Um, Evaluate in the depth graph and everything. So I know, I know. We, we had a basic working uh, demo, but it wasn't just usable yet. So. Where's the code even? <laughs> I don't even know where I put it. I think it's still there, and uh, either in a branch or maybe even in master, but it's not uh, not enabled. Mm -hmm. Probably in a branch. Yeah, I think. In a branch, no, definitely not in master. No, no. How? All right. Where in the code? Maybe we can. We need to browse the code. The lie. Oh, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> next week, I don't know, maybe like Wednesday. Oh, I do have uh, my Wednesday free, Pablo. <laughs> We're planning to have a live stream where we uh, go through the code, basically. So stay tuned for the news on that. Next week is going to be crazy. I want to have some people from the studio, from Settlers, um, uh, working on this new project. Uh, also, I uh, plan to have some VFX, maybe, I don't know, maybe some. Uh, uh, one minute tutorial guy showing up or some captain that Ooh, with wow. the dissolution maybe I'm talking uh, I, next week is gonna be wild in content actually the blender YouTube channel is crazy I don't know if you're subscribed to this channel and if you have notifications you're probably very confused because you get scripting for artists tutorials about learning Python which are awesome then some <laughs> making off of character then you get live streams with artists and now with developers uh, we might be overdoing it. Okay, next, uh, real grouping of objects. Real group. What is a real grouping of objects? I know. You know it is. You don't know. You group it, and then you can move them together. Yeah, and they can double click and select all of them. It's like a like, collection. Yeah, I like SketchUp groups. Yes. Random colors per collection. Again, overrides. Wireframes for technical modeling are still bad. Why do you guys keep changing them in each version? Um, wireframes are important. You should have a solid designs from the beginning. The 2.8 versions are no more bad than any other software. 
hey, that's mean. It's not that they get changed by like on purpose to make your life worse. It just takes time. It just it tries to be improved, and then people get feedback and stuff. It's just it's not a it's not easy. <laughs> but that that last part sound like like mean. Why are you making it worse? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> and the last question. Um, hey everyone, I have a question about voxel remeshing. There is the concern the, for the question, and the concern is um, bad behavior in voxel remeshing. Is it possible somehow to fix it, such as this case? To be fair, voxel remeshing is still not reliable. Let's call it tool for decent workflow, and perhaps Pablo Barro working on it or for improving it. But I'm curious to see what you guys are thinking about it. Is an invalid bug report um, that Pablo closed this is intended behavior. So apparently it's intended behavior, um, but I'm not I'm not sure about this one. I guess you need to. I mean, oh, I, I opened the wrong task here. Seventy four three eighty five. I mean, I mean, if the developer that made it, it's it says that it's intended behavior, then there's not um, maybe not much that can be done. It's a voxel, so if the meshes are too close, it's gonna make a new. A, a new mesh. Uh, it's gonna connect them. Uh, it's part of the nature, I think, of volume stuff. I think that it's all. You said there were there were images. Okay, here. Let's see. Since you said that you have time, let's go. I wanted a uh, question. Sorry, Javier Carreras. This uh, says <laughs> I want to know <laughs> if there was a quick way to name the object data block and the mesh data block at the same time. Or something similar without copying and pasting one at a time. No. Not even Python scripting. No, no. Python scripting. Python scripting. Not well, even with, with the battery. Oh, well, maybe the batch. Oh, I got an error by running the battery naming. Huh. Interesting. So maybe if I run it from here, battery name. Ah, it works. Okay. This is nice for Campbell. Battery naming from the new search menu fails. Um, so yeah, no, there is a batch like you can name and you can change the object data, but not really, yeah, not really both at the same time. I think, uh, there was an, an add on for that in 2.7 at least or in 2.4. I don't know if it's there anymore. Not rename, no name, batch rename data blocks. There is this add on. Yes, search, rename, search, rename. Um, okay, I have the new search. I don't know if that's uh, showing up there, but basically you should um, check for that add-on. There was an add-on. The other question that has images, let's jump into those that spend a lot of work. Let's see. Sounds like QuadriFlow and Mixed and some other on the left. So, hello, Pablo, I wanted to ask, when Pablo was implementing QuadriFlow. It's not Pablo. QuadriFlow was implemented by Sebastian Parborg. Did he check other papers? Because I found another method that produces more reliable results for multi-rest sculpting called Mixed Integer Quadrangulation. It works pretty well on both organics and hard surface models. I believe there was a Google Summit of Code dedicated to integrating this into Blender. Was there? Maybe, I don't remember, but like the problem with those kind of methods is you have a lot of papers and then you have to go into them and find the ones who are um, practic practically usable. Like often you have something which seems very nice in the paper and doesn't actually uh, come very usable in the, in the practical life of a 3D software because either it's super slow or it only works well in some specific cases, but it's just giving very bad results in others. It doesn't or, make it with like, the rest of uh, Yeah, uh, Sebastian spent a lot of time fixing some very critical bugs in the, uh, the library that features the methods he's using there. So it's it's always a problem with um, uh, the, the research, those kind of research. The guy don't have really time to actually produce proper code, so you have to to go over what they produced and mm -hmm. make it uh, really usable and stable and everything so it takes a lot of time and yeah it's a lot of uh, effort to actually bring even one method that way 
Yes, uh, I mean the examples always looks amazing. This one looks uh, looks mm. great actually. Um, but um, yeah, it's uh, it takes a lot of testing and error. I don't know if there was a Google Summerlock. I don't think so. Next um, question. Let's see um, if I can find one. Another about edge groups. <laughs> Edge groups are all the rage. And then we're going to have edge groups and people are going to ask polygroups, which is like vertex groups. But uh, I think that's all of the ones with the images so far. And I think I, take, I took enough time from you guys. Uh, I didn't answer the ones, the verse ones. Okay, let's do three more. You you ask for it. Let's do three more and then I order them by the bottom top. Uh, so the ones that were answered first. So in this case, this one was first, even in the afternoon. Um, hi, Pablo. I hope you're safe and fine. Thank you. I hope you too. It's possible to add an option to slightly shift the position and rotation using the array modifier. Um, no, there is not currently um, that option. And I have high hopes in modifier nodes. Next question. Hi again. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I think the last three questions are by the same user. Is the, the curve modifier for that? Curve modifier to uh, uh, change the pos slightly change the position and rotation. Yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah, or use an offset, an object, uh, an object as an offset. Right. Um, nice. Why don't you guys merge e cycles in Blender? <laughs> uh, e cycles is not open source, is it? Where is the code? Uh, they sent he, he sent the code once it was he sent but he sent as GPL not as uh, Apache and it needs to be Apache. Apache. yeah so honestly the people that have been supporting these cycles projects should talk to, to to that developer and say hey can't this code be distributed as Apache and as a ideally as a diff compared to an existing version of Blender instead of a dump of the entire Blend code exactly Without, so you don't, you don't have to ask us or right developers ask the developer that made that um, add-on or Blender or Cycles version to clean up the code, make it Apache with the, like, the same license as Cycles and promote and share it as a diff on developer.blender.org, not like sent by email or something. It needs to be public for everybody to do to review it basically. And um, I. What else? The last okay, <laughs> the last one is again by Augusta, and he has like a bunch. Hey, some some FBX and uh, Bastien work on FBX. So <laughs> I know I love I know you love. No, it. I don't. <laughs> Why when we import FBX, the materials come totally weird, like metallic all the way up and specular in one or two on the principal shader. When we import FBX, it's probably the fault of the exporter of the FBX in another app, or uh, like I have. No idea of hand. The problem is that currently we only support the old uh, fix pipeline for shading in FBX, like the one we you had in uh, Blender internal too. We don't support at all the the node the node system that uh, FBX is supposed to handle currently. So we have to make a conversion, and the conversion is very uh, very approximative. So yeah you can't really expect to get a proper one-on-one -on -one result that way. And it also depends on the other app, right? If you export it from uh, Maya, Max, uh, whatever, they all probably have their own way. Yes, probably, because I guess they are also using modern shaders, and they also have to convert those modern shaders to the, the old representation in FBX. So you, you always lose a lot of uh, information that way. Yeah. Um... Okay, I think we reached the, the moment, like we reached a question is like light linking for object or group collection. <laughs> That's another one that we get every week. So sorry, Maciel, Maciel, but if you look at, if you watch any live stream from the last, I don't know, two months, there is always a question about light linking. We already answered this. There is a patch, but there is just so many patches uh, to, to review. Um, and yeah, I think all the other questions, uh, I think we can leave it for... Uh, some other live stream. Is it okay? Yeah, sure. Cool. Will I lie? You're yeah. All, All right. Good. I'm sorry. All good. I muted myself because I was compiling again. You know, compiling. The what are you working on? I want to know. I want to know about you. I think we answer 
lots of questions today. So I want to know what you guys are working on. Today is the cold quality day, right? What does it mean? What does it mean? Is it mean to actually set aside one day a month to only did to make sure the code is better, a little bit better, either by splitting big files into small files or renaming variables so it's more clear what they mean. Or what I was doing is was we have a macro, which is a macro. A macro. It's something instead of having like a few lines of code, you have one line which would do a few operations. And we'd, you'd, you'd use them in a few time, in a few places, but not in every single play, place we could. So I was uh, using the macro elsewhere. But uh, of course, I mean, I'm, I'm adding a thousand, literally a thousand places. So I had to have a script to parse the code and see when it could be replaced. And there are some exceptions. So now I'm handling the exceptions that play the things that don't build. So it's really like no added value from the end user, but a lot of added value to the developers. That's the to developers, Maybe. existing developers and new developers are going to benefit from a cleaner code. So it's good for the future. But besides that, what are you, where are you working on? Are you coding even? You're also coordinator, but are you coding? Barely. I do want to, there was one thing I was, sorry, I started to code on my own time the other day, a, a few weeks ago, which is uh, basically trying to see how far, how hard would be to implement proper support to stereoscopic textures for rendering and, and viewport and whatnot. However, there, we still have a few, one bug on 3D visualization in the viewport, so I'm kind of waiting for this to be fixed so I can look at that again. But I don't, I don't, I don't have a lot of time to, to code, to be honest. Um, especially if I was trying to, to keep like maybe Fridays or Wednesday, one of those days to, for coding. But with the whole quarantine, kind of the, the work routine changed a lot as well. So so again, it's a new routine. Same, same. I'm working more now in quarantine than before. Bastian, okay. what are you working on besides uh, the code quality day? Anything yeah, I didn't to... even I didn't even do any code quality day today. I was working on undo and fixing some bugs. The new undo speed up system, you know. So yeah, it's like. The, the the bug was reported by the artist and found in the production file. So it takes a lot of time to um, investigate it and find and understand what is actually the issue. But the, the the fix was two lines of code to be changed, but it <laughs> takes yeah. me more than two days to actually get to it. To find it. Is there anything the community can help you with? Like demo files that are more easy to understand or any? Yeah, I mean, if or you can patience. get... Uh, if you can get some crash with a simple file, it's always much easier to 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 investigate and to understand that when you have to dive into a production file. But otherwise, you know, just testing and trying to get it to, to see if it works. At least if it's stable, that's the, the main issue. Because we know there are still some um, some like some cases which are not working like this should. We have some. Some cases where the, the, the speed is still almost the same as the old undo code. And we kind of know why, but it's complicated to work on it currently. So I really I would really like to first stabilize the code as much as possible so that it can actually be used. <laughs> All right. But so for people that are watching at home, sorry. No, no, I was gonna say it's interesting because this week we we agree that we really, really want to have uh, the new one doing the 2.83 enabled by default, non-negotiable. <laughs> but we really want to work towards that. So we officially had the Blender Animation Studio to switch and start using this for production. Yes. And the deal is they can they sh they have to use it until they find a bug that they, they that they can reproduce. And at that moment, then Bastian can go and fix it, and they can they're allowed to roll back and then use the vanilla Blender as everyone else. And then we go back and forth on that. You see, so because 2.83 is a long-term release, so it would be very nice if the undo was uh, was part of this. So how can you help? You can go to the user preferences in under interface. You have to enable developer extras. It's gonna enable another. It's gonna like show you a new section down here called experimental, where you can enable the undo speed up. I actually had it disabled. Uh, undo speed up. I don't use undo much actually. Um, undo speed up. Then. Uh, you need to save, right? And reload Blender, or is it enough? Um, 
No, no, you, the, you can enable and disable while running Blender. It should not uh, affect anything. Oh, so actually, like here the is... like technically the the data which is saved for the undo is the same in both cases. It's just the way we read it when we actually do an undo or redo step which changes. So you can just enable or disable it on the fly. Ah, cool. So you can on the fly just try it before yes. and after, and it should work. Awesome. Yes. So if uh, at home, you're using it and you find the crash, please try to simplify the file as much as possible, even if it's a cube, a monkey, that's even better. Remove all the materials, all the nodes, all everything that maybe doesn't make it crash. And those yes. are the best example files. And go to help, report the bug. You're gonna have it in Blender. If you don't know how to report the bug, you can click on how to report the bug to watch a video we where you can get this boy talking about how to make monkeys crash and uh, that should be enough all right so okay that's uh, that's enough for this week remember there is a backend developer opening at the blender studio when we go back to the studio it's gonna be great and uh, you can join there is a, a text here you can find it everywhere on on here on the blender.org website all the information all right enough Thank you guys once again for staying until the end another week we're gonna see each other again next week for another q a at the end of the week i um expect to have some guests during the week so stay tuned for that uh, all right i'm gonna say bye to you guys and i'm gonna say bye then to the community thank you oh. bastian bye thank you Dalai. have a nice weekend you too oh we oh, it's weekend yes yes <laughs> What a great news. I completely forgot. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. I see you later. <laughs> see you later, Pablo. See you later, everyone. All right. Stay Sweet. safe. Stay inside. Bye bye. Bye. Stay inside, please. Yes. All right. Cool. Uh, I need to go to full screen. I need to say hi, bye, hey, hi, and bye, actually, to you community thank you for staying until the end i hope you like this episode i hope you like this week of updates have you checked the blender the, the, the blender youtube channel as uh, there is a new uh, tutorial about how to make your own operator in python which is super nice very well explained by sivran um, he before made some other uh, explanations about the difference between a for and a while loop for example so it's great for python and there is more planned so make sure you go check that video and leave in the comments maybe what uh, what do you want to learn again in python by one of the blender core developers himself um, there's also a new training on how to for free in, uh, in this channel about a new series from the Blender Cloud called the Settlers. It's a collection of um, characters and maybe environments even that are gonna be published weekly, but daily content. But the, this every week is like a new character that can be made from scratch, rigged from scratch, and everything is gonna be recorded and shared here on the Blender channel as well. We try to put new content every day. It's that's the goal during this quarantine to make um, to make everybody's life a little bit better. It's just new content every day, whatever comes up. It doesn't have to be a live stream. It doesn't have to be a, a tutorial. It can be anything, but that's our goal. We're doing our best. I hope you too. Stay home. Don't go out places if you don't have to. Just go for the minimum. It's uh, it's the only way we can finish this. The 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 more we stay in, the more we the earlier we can go out. Think about it. All right. Thanks again. Remember that in five, four, three, two, one. I will see you again next week. Next week, same place, same time. Ian Ewart, Captain the Solution, browsing the code, the settler team, and who knows what else. See you next week. Same place, same time. Bye bye. Ciao.